One of my biggest frustrations with Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab is that Jupyter Notebook is not a great tool for reproducible results. You get different results when you execute the cells in different orders. This gets worse when you need to collaborate with other people. In my data science project, it's not uncommon to receive notebooks from someone else in my team and it turns out it's almost impossible to figure out how to run the notebook. Maybe a variable just magically appear without being defined anywhere or a function being defined after it is called. Or I just get lost in the structure of the notebook. For example, I don't know which part is experimentation and which part is actually to run the output. So it's often a big hassle and a time-consuming process to reproduce the results when I need to. As much as I love to be the lab for how flexible and usable it is, from my experience, it could easily become a nightmare in a production and collaborative setting of a machine learning project. So I came across Link, a Jupyter Lab extension created by Makina Rocks that addresses this exact problem. This extension allows users to create a pipeline on top of existing code cells. Thus, it helps other people easily understand the dependency structure of the code cells and the execution order of the cells. Another nice feature of Link is the cache management. You probably noticed that when the Jupyter Lab kernel is restarted, you would lose all the output and most likely you have to rerun all the cells from the beginning. But luckily, this extension allows users to export, import, and share cache results so that we won't need to rerun the whole notebook all the time. And we can resume the process at the exact point where your teammates left off. Those are some of the key features of this extension that I found really helpful. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how exactly you can use the link extension. I'll be walking you through an interesting personal project I did to create stylized images using my own paintings, using neural style transfer. Some of you might not yet be familiar with this algorithm and deep learning in general, but I'll try my best to explain what happens in the notebook. If you're interested in learning more about deep learning, I'd highly recommend the deep learning specialization by Andrew Ng on Coursera. Link in the description. However, the main purpose of this video is to show you how to use the link extension in your data science project to hopefully help you save tons of time in the future. Okay, to get started with link, it's recommended that we install link extension in a virtual environment to avoid conflict with existing packages. So I'll go ahead and create a virtual environment for my project. I'll just follow the tutorial here to install the link package. So we do python 3-m pip install dash dash upgrade mrx underscore link. And after installing the extension, we can go ahead and launch JupyterLab with python 3-m Jupyter Lab. After launching, you can see that the Jupyter Lab interface looks very familiar, except for a few additional menu tabs here. We can see a tab for checking the link extension, and here's a pipeline area that will display the pipeline once we create it. And we also have a tab for accessing the Linkit extension. Now to save time, I've already copied my whole notebook here. This notebook implements neural style transfer, which is an optimization technique used to take two images, a content image and a style referenced image, such as an artwork by a famous painter and blend them together so that the output looks like the content image, but painted in the style of the style image. The code might look a little bit intimidating, but the idea of this notebook is quite simple. We all know that images make no sense to computer, let alone the concepts of style and content. So to blend together the content image and the style image, we need a way to represent the image content and style. For this, we use a pre-trained image classification network such as the VGG90 network architecture, which has been trained on huge image datasets such as ImageNet. Because at a high level, in order for a network to perform image classification, it must understand the image. This requires taking the raw image as input pixels and building an internal representation of the features of the image. Thus, somewhere between where the raw image is fed into the model and the output classification label, the model serves as a complex feature extractor. Starting from the network's input layer, the first few layer activations represent low-level features like edges and textures of the images. As we step through the network, the final few layers represent high-level features, object parts like wheels or eyes. Therefore, we can use the output of the intermediate layers of the model 
to describe the content and the style of the images. Then we just need to perform an optimization process, in this case to tweak the weights in different layers to minimize the loss with respect to both the content and the style. At the end of this optimization process, we are left with an image that most resembles the content image in terms of content and the style image in terms of style. Now let's go ahead and create a pipeline for this notebook. You can see that once we install the link extension, we have a plus icon here for each of the code cells. So it means that for every code cell, you can define which part of the pipeline it is. For example, in this cell, I import all the modules I need. So I can click on add to pipeline here and I type here import modules. And for the parent components, we don't actually need to select anything here because this is the first step in our pipeline. So I'll just go ahead and add to pipeline. You can see here we have an import modules step in the pipeline. And if we click on the link tab, we can see that we have an import module here in our pipeline. Next, I have a function called tensor to image, which is to convert a tensor to an image. So I'll just call this one define tensor to image function. And for the parent components here, I'll choose import modules because this is uh, the next step in the pipeline. And here we can see that we have the second step added here. Similarly, I have a step called choose style image and content image. So choose images. And here for the parent components, I will put it as define tensor to image component. And here in this pane, you can use the mouse to zoom in or zoom out or to move the position of the pipeline. Next, I have a cell called visualize the input. So I'll call it visualize input images. Now, if we click on any components here, for example, import modules, we can see that there are a few different options here. So the first option here is to enable or disable caching of the components. So if I click on here, I have enabled caching of these components. So the output of this cell will be cached. The next icon is to run the cell. So if I run this cell again, this cell will be automatically run. And for this icon, I can say who is the writer and comment. So uh, if I save it, other people can see my comments here in the pipeline. Next, I'll just try the fast style transfer using TensorFlow Hub. So I just load a model from the hub and this model is called arbitrary image stylization. And I'll just use this model to apply on my content image and the style image. And then I just convert the output to the image to be able to see it. So here in this step, I'll call it fast style transfer. And for the parent components, I'll choose the last step in our pipeline, the visualized input images. Although this is very fast, I'm not quite happy with the output from this fast style transfer model. So I just go ahead and implement the traditional neural style transfer algorithm. I want to use the VGG19 network architecture to represent my content and style images. So I first want to do a test run on this VGG19 19 model on my image to ensure that it's used correctly. So here in this cell, I basically run the prediction for my content image to see which kind of predictions it come up with. So here we have the viaduct, the dam, castle, fountain, and lakeside. If we look at this content image, you can see that it's almost accurate. It's quite feasible, although it doesn't know that this is just Amsterdam city center. But okay, I'll just go ahead and name this step test run VGG19 and for the parent components I'll choose the visualize input images because this is the second path that we are following. We are going to run the style transfer algorithm ourselves. Next we have a component for choosing the intermediate layers to present the style and the content of the image so I'll just name this cell choose layers. And for the parent components, apparently it is after the test run VGG19. Next, we actually build the model. And here in this step, we have the calculate style. Well, we as humans can naturally recognize styles, but machines don't. I'm not going into the detail here, but basically uh, this is a function that we can calculate that. So I'll call it calculate style function. And here for the parent components, choose the choose layer component. Similarly, I have some functions to extract style and content of an image. So here I will call this 
extract style and content. This is quite a big notebook, so I'll speed up the video a little bit here. And here for the run optimization, this is actually where I get the final output. I'm quite happy with that. So I just call this step optimization in the pipeline. And fast forward, this is the final pipeline of our notebook. Now I'll go ahead and cache all the components that I want to cache. And now we can run all components to uh, check if everything is working. And after this, you can go ahead and export the cache if you want by right clicking on the panel and choose export cache. And in the future, you or other people can import this cache so that they don't need to rerun the whole notebook. Some small features that I find quite useful is that you can also export the individual link components as JSON or save it as a Python file. So you can easily share those components with other people and an additional feature is that you can color the components with different colors so that you can visually distinguish different parts of the pipeline if you want to try out this extension yourself check out the link in the description i've also added the link to the github repo for this project so that you can run it yourself let me know what you think about this extension if you got any value from this video please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already with that i'll see you in the next video bye bye